TikTok gives people, everybody, the opportunity to be a creative and it, it, there's no limitations on that. I'm keen for the kind of final third of, of the conversation for us to kind of take some of the theoretical stuff that we're, we're talking about and explain uh, a bit about how we can put it into practice. They're talking about the actual process. How do you make this stuff happen? How do you execute really, really well? So, um, Stephanie, starting off with you, um, what is it that the, the brands that are winning on TikTok are doing? Like, what's the ingredient that they have that's leading to their success? And then maybe talk a bit about like the ones that are maybe missing the mark as well. Like, what, what are they lacking? What do they need to do a bit more of like, when it comes down to, to doing the work and making it happen? So I think there is no secret sauce. Like, I think that's very clear. And I think we've established that. And I think like for brands that are doing it well, I'm like, how do I summarize this in one word? I think it's that they're fearless, right? They are fearless and they are risk takers. And I think that's, in my personal opinion, what has changed in marketing and advertising. Like, people are afraid to take risks. And I think the brands that are doing really well are the ones that are taking risks. Like, if you think about, um, like, luxury fashion houses and things like that, like, they have a very specific way of how they show up on channels and how they show up on different platforms. And actually on TikTok, they're, they're breaking that. They're like, okay, let's throw this out of the window and do something completely different. Like, I think a great example of that is um, a campaign that I worked on for um, Off-White. So we did a, a Virgil Abloh tribute show and that was incredible and you know we had everybody there um, you know you're backstage with whoever and I think that was kind of like one of those moments where we actually had um, Unknown T who's a rapper UK rapper like grime rapper he was actually presenting and that was his first time ever presenting or hosting or anything and he did we basically he like hosted the whole event alongside a, a US uh, creator and essentially it was taking him out of his comfort zone putting him in an environment that he wouldn't usually be in and that made it a huge success and I think that's the brands that are doing it well the ones that are kind of as I said being fearless and and taking those risks and you know I know that's easier said than done lots of brands have red tape on them and, and things like that but I think it's kind of like getting to that right person at the top and being like look we just need to take this risk if, if we if we don't take risks and we won't see change and then that, then you'll have kind of like a stagnant marketing and creative and, and advertising environment and that's not what we want we're here to be creative and break boundaries and inspire people um, I think brands that aren't doing it well again I'll just say it again it's the brands that aren't being fearless it's the brands that are kind of like oh okay we, d we don't want to we're not ready to do that yet like and I, I think those are the brands that are going to be left behind and I think there's there's so many opportunities and there's so many kind of like subcultures and like for me TikTok is kind of like boundless um, and there are no limitations like you know you have Francis Bourgeois doing a campaign for Gucci which I never thought I would see or you have um, I think I said this earlier but you have drag queens teaching uh, mathematics or like you know those kind of like unexpected little moments of joy that you experience on the platform those are what's important and the brands that aren't willing to kind of like embrace that are the ones that are going to be left behind. Yeah. Olivia, turning our attention to creators then, like what should a brand be looking for when they are enlisting a creator? And then once they have, how do they empower them to, to like do something really amazing and create those moments of joy? Totally. So um, first off, you probably know that I think that creators can be used at all stages of the process. So not just thinking about them as content engines or media engines, um, you know, use them. They're creative directors, they're creative visionaries. Use them for that, that real muscle that they can bring to the table. And then when working with the creators, you've got the, the matchmaking piece that, that we take a lot of care over at Whaler, which is, you know, not just about do their aesthetic match what we're going after, are our affinities aligned? Do we share the same values? Because if I share the same values as brand, that's going to be high propensity for my community also sharing those similar values, also for that messaging to really land. So that match matchmaking should go so far beyond aesthetics and really start to look at the intersections, the, the shared passion points, the shared values, um, and, and look at things on that much deeper level. And then when it comes to the production side of things, we call it the freedom of a tightly written brief. So um, coming back to this, you know, how do you, how do you help brands to be brave and really make the most of um, what they're doing on the platform? Well, it's about putting in guardrails. Guardrails enough to make sure that it's gonna be brand safe and it's not gonna be completely off key, but really within that, allowing lots and lots of space for expression, for interpretation, for perspective, and for those point of views to really shine through. 
because when you're looking for creators, you know, the types of things to really look for in a creator is a, crea is, is a community leader with a really strong point of view that you can say, hey, that really aligns with my brand and where I want to take it. Um, you're looking for somebody who has a loyal following, you know, people commenting, that two-way dialogue. You really can't fake that. You really can't, you know, there are rumors about numbers and impressions and things like that. But actually, if people are commenting, if people are engaging, you know, that's very, very real. Um, and yeah, I think that shared values piece with the brand is super, super important. Um, but yeah, you don't really need to sit there scratching your head, wondering how, wondering what my tone of voice should be or needs to be, because the creators are really there to help you with that. They're your kind of cultural translators and cultural communicators. Um, and so we talk a bit about Whaler, um, getting creators you know, off your mood boards and into your boardrooms. And so if you're wondering where to start, bring those creators into your boardroom, bring them into that thinking and, you know, you'll be set up for success. I also want to add to that, sorry, really quickly. Like, I think, and this may be controversial given the setting, is that I think what TikTok has established is that everybody is a creative. Like, everybody has the opportunity to be a creative in any kind of, like, shape or form. And it's not, like... I call myself like a non-traditional creative because I'm not, I'm a project director, so I do project management. So I would say that I'm not a traditional creative. And I think now what we're seeing is kind of like the growth of the non-traditional creative. And as you were saying, Olivia, like giving them the opportunity to help you do your strategy because it's, it's their perspective that is bringing your brand to life. And actually, as much as I hate to say it, adding authenticity to, to what you're doing. And I think that's something that like people, creatives, agencies, businesses and brands need to really understand is that TikTok gives people, everybody the opportunity to be a creative and it, it, there's no limitations on that.